On the 26th and 27th of August, Lati in Finland will be hosting some of the best triathletes in the world. It is, of course, the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. Yeah, it is time to get excited. We're going to be taking a close look at the course and an even closer look at the top contenders vying for the men's and women's crowns. So the 70.3 Ironman World Championships have come back to Europe, this time to the Nordic region of Northern Europe. Um, we actually have had the 70.3 World Championships in this continent before, in Nice in 2019. Since then, we missed a year due to the pandemic, and then we actually have had two years of repeat in Utah, the United States. Yeah, well this year we've also got the Men's Ironman World Championships in Europe as well, which is going to obviously make travel a bit less for some of the pros and potentially make it cheaper. But it's the timing that becomes quite notable here. Yeah, and the 70.3 World Championships is quite an exciting one because of the calibre and depth of athletes that it can attract. We quite often have the short course Olympic distance athletes stepping up to the 70.3 distance and really doing quite well. And of course, we have the long distance athletes focusing on it as their A race, making our job of predictions very tricky. Yeah, and that's where the calendar comes in because if you look at the races happening just one week before the Half Hour Man World Champs, we've got the Paris Test event on the Thursday and Friday and then the, Sat the Saturday and Sunday before that you've got the PTO Asian Open. So that's all happening within the week before the Ironman World Champs, the 70.3 World Champs. And then take another two weeks and you've got the full distance for the men. So it's going to be interesting to see just how the athletes prioritise these races. Well, before we dive into the start list for Lati, we should probably familiarise ourselves a little bit with the course. So the 1.9 kilometre swim is a lake swim in Lake Viziava. The athletes are actually going to start from a dive start on a wooden platform in Tava Harbour. And they perform one loop before exiting at the passenger harbour and then run up a set of steps into T1. Yeah, and then onto the bike, and it's again, it's a one loop, it heads out into the countryside, and it sounds rather pretty, but I don't think it's got anything hugely technical and apparently just nice rolling hills. And then when they come into the start of the run, it actually start indoors at the Sport and Fair Centre, which sounds kind of quite cool and unique, out through the stadium, and then apparently there's quite a long climb uphill, then followed by a gradual descent, and there's the rest of it, it's a two-lap course, the rest of that lap has quite a few tourist attractions, sounds quite pretty. And then on the final lap, the runners will head towards the famous Selpel Circus ski jump, and into the finish shoot. Yeah, it does sound like a lovely course. Mm, and from the does. pictures I've seen, it looks very, very nice. Now, if you are interested in tuning in, the pros are going to start at 7.30 a.m. local finish time, which is Eastern European summer time or universal coordinated time, plus two hours if you're really interested. The women are going to start on Saturday, the men on Sunday, which leads us nicely on to the start list for the pros. Yeah. Which ones to watch um, and how we think it might play out. I think we should start with the women. Yeah, well, let's dive in. We're going to have to glance at our notes, I feel, on, on this. But um, shall we start off with the reigning champion, Taylor Nib? She's literally just come off the back of the Paris Test event where she's already secured her Olympic qualification slot, so she can put that behind her. Um, we've seen a great improvement from her even since last year. So she's been working a lot on her TT position, having recently signed with the pro cycling team Little Trek. We've also seen some big improvements in her running, and that was evident in the recent PTO US Open win. Yeah, well, next on the list has to be none other than Daniela Reef. Mm -hmm. Now, we haven't actually seen her race since her world record-breaking performance in Roth two months ago, but that was obviously a phenomenal performance. And what really stood out was her swim performance. She stuck on the feet of Fenella. She was out at the front of the race, meaning she could, if she was able to bring out that sort of swim performance at the 70.3 World Championships, have a fantastic race. And she is coming in with five 70.3 World titles already to her name. Crazy. Could she make this her sixth? Yeah, well... Talking of Roth on the podium, we've also got Laura Phillip in the mix. Well, as well as that third place finish at Roth, we've seen Laura dominate over the 70.3 distance. In fact, she's won every race she's entered this year, including the very recent po top of the podium at the 70.3 European Championship. So I feel that she's going to be coming in with a lot of confidence. However, she's only been on the podium once at 70.3 Wells, and that was back in 2017. We also have Paula Finlay, who specialises in this distance, as well as the PTO 100K format, and actually recently placed third at the PTO US Open. And she is the second place finisher from last year's 70.3 World Championship. So she's definitely a strong contender and brings a lot of biking prowess as well to the race. However, she's had a lot of travelling lately. Not only did she do the PTO US Open, the following week she was over in Europe, 
at Glasgow for the UCI Cycling World Championships competing in the TT event on a different bike setup. And then two weeks later, she's going to be doing the 70.3 Worlds. Yeah, that is a packed schedule. Well, moving on, another athlete who specialises at this distance is Holly Lawrence. Well, she's certainly proven this is her distance, obviously winning the title back in 2016. She was runner-up in 2019, and Holly is known for her strong swimming, so I think she'll be trying to see if she can stay on the feet of Taylor Nib. But she's certainly put a lot of effort into this. She's moved over from America for a training camp in St. Moritz, up in altitude in Switzerland. So it's going to be interesting to see if she could make 2023 the third time on the podium for 70.3 Worlds. Yeah, well, another multiple 70.3 Worlds medal winner is Emma Pallant-Brown. She placed third last year and then got second back in 2017. She's also in form. She has had two impressive 70.3 wins this season already. So definitely another strong contender. And her running is without a doubt one of the best in the field. So if she can make her way to the front of the race, she's definitely a big threat on that podium. But that is the big question. Can she get herself to the front after potentially a deficit after the swim? Yeah, well, moving on, we now have Kat Matthews to take a look at. Well, Kat is an athlete we're definitely excited to see. I mean, seemingly her emphasis has been on longer distance races, but she's proven her prowess over this distance. I mean, she came fourth at 70.3 Wells back in 2021. And this year, she has been improving quite rapidly with that win at Texas, the full distance. It's just going to be interesting to see how she's prioritising the full distance Worlds, which are only going to be a, sort of a few weeks, so to speak, after the 70.3 Worlds. Well, now we're actually going to move into some wildcard athletes that could certainly shake things up, if not actually contend to get on the podium if they have an absolute blinder of the day. So first one is Marjolaine Pierre, who is PTO World Rank 17th and placed 16th at the 70.3 Worlds last year and really seems to be in form. She was actually the World Triathlon World Long Distance Champion this year and has an absolutely wicked run. Yeah, she does. Another athlete to watch, Imogen Simmons, has seemingly recovered from that quite major hip operation and she's been on the podium three times this year, including two wins. So it's going to be interesting to see how she stacks up against this strong field. Yeah, and India Lee, who is world ranked 16th and is just Strong swimmer, strong biker, strong runner. She's strong all round, very consistent, and also has that Challenge Samarin title behind her and under her mm. belt this year to give her that bit of confidence and be excited if she could get up there. All right, so that is the contenders. How do we, or Mark, how do you think it's going to pan out? Well, that's a big question. Well, I think Taylor Nib is certainly going to be trying to get a gap over the rest of the field, mm. the likes of Holly Lawrence, um, India Lee, but obviously the biggest rival for her, I think it's got to be down in a reef but we have just recently seen Daniela playing out a fantastic swim performance which could purr in the realms of being able to stay quite close mm. to Taylor I don't think she's quite got the ability to stay on her feet but if she's able to minimize that gap that can make the bike very interesting yeah it could and that's why I guess Taylor's going to be looking to potentially try and swim with Lucy Buckingham oh, who yeah. is probably the fastest swimmer in the field and if Taylor can stay on her feet can she open up enough of a gap to kind of leave Daniela with the other swimmers and like whether that ends up being a big group. I mean, you could see, like you mentioned, Holly Lawrence is very known for her strong swimmer. She's with Daniela and then Indy Lee, Imogen Simmons, Ellie Salthouse, another strong swimmer. Yeah. If they end up being a big pack, could that then make it harder for the, the slightly weaker swimmers like Emma Pallant-Brown? Yeah. Giving her more to do. So let's say that Taylor's gone up the road at this point. How yeah, I think what's there? interesting, what will be interesting, it probably makes sense for Taylor and Lucy to try and work together. Should they come out of the swim? Work together on the bike, however... Taylor is just, so not to say that Lucy's mm. not a great biker, she really is, but Taylor's biking is just on another level mm. at the moment. Can Lucy stay with her, help one another as long as they can? What I suspect will happen is we'll see Taylor just drifting away eventually mm -hmm. and going solo. Can she hold on, hold off a group that's chasing yeah. her for as long as possible? That's yeah. the interesting one. And then what about that group? I mean, also Kat Matthews, another one who could well be in there, Paula Finley. There's so many strong bikers. Do you think Daniela can, over this shorter distance, break away from them? Or do you think she'd, uh, does she need to? Uh, at those dynamics of, of how that's going to, and they're also going to be looking over the shoulder, checking that those fast runners don't catch up with that group. So the group are going to be working hard, I feel. Yeah, th this is interesting. I actually haven't seen Daniel race 70.3 for a while and yeah. so used to seeing her push on the latter stages of the bike on an Ironman distance mm. and that's where she sort of breaks Opens the field. That. I suspect she'll probably try and do the same on the 70.3. You'll see her riding with the group and then really push on mm. the second half and then trying to bridge that gap between Taylor and the big group. But... Who knows? Yeah. And then, I, I mean, I can't really see past Taylor and, and Daniela as, yeah. as one and two. Um, I've sort of rolled in pred predictions here, right? No, I? This is, that's my predictions too. Taylor, I reckon Taylor one, Daniela second. And I am actually going to go that way around. And then yeah, for I am. third, We're... my prediction is Paula Finlay. 
I mean, it's just on my tongue, oh, tongue oh, then. I'm but I, I, I mean, but I think third is really open. Yes. I, yeah. I feel like there's, I mean, someone like Laura Phillip could come through and surprise, or Emma Pallant Brown, Kat Matthews. You know, we don't, we don't know what these girls, how they're racing over this distance. So, yeah. super excited, can't wait. But time to look at the men. Yeah, <laughs> well, moving on to that. And shock horror, we're going to start by talking about the Norwegians. I know mm. it probably seems like we're a stuck record, but Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden actually hold the three last Ironman 70.3 world titles. So yeah, I think it's easy think to forget that, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Christian is the defending champion from 2022 and is uh, fairly accustomed to being on the podium. He is the 2021 Ironman world champion and third in 2022. He's also the defending Olympic champion and currently PTO world ranked number one. However, he is coming off a ridiculous mm -hmm. race schedule. Literally, at the time of filming this, he is towing the line at the Paris test event. And then on the same weekend, he's heading over to Singapore, from Paris to Singapore, to race in the PTO Asian Open. And then just a week later, in Lati for the 70.3 World Championships. Is it too much? Is he going to ruin his chances? If anyone could do it, it's probably Christian Blumenfeld, isn't it? Yeah, it's mind-boggling. But someone who could interrupt his success is his fellow countryman, Gustav Eden. He's recently been sort of quite open about his frustrations of not being selected for the Paris Test event, and he's openly said that he's putting all his eggs in the Olympic basket, so he is desperate to get to Paris 2024, so much so that he is not going to be defending his Ironman World Championship title, which could mean that this is really sort of the ideal timing or opportunity for him, because he's got all of this energy to put into this event. I don't know how much training he's done on his TT bike with that Olympic focus, but he has won this event in 2019 and 2021, and like I said, is the reigning full distance world champion. So yeah, the credentials look pretty good for Gustav too. Yeah, well, someone who'd be looking to put a stop to this Norwegian 70.3 title run is Sam Long. Well, Sam is a bit of a specialist at the distance. However, he has had a bit of an underpar start to the year, though managed to turn it around with back-to-back -back wins. In fact, he had three in the space of five weeks, which is really impressive. He has had a rather whirlwind year. He recently became a father to his baby son, and with that, managed to actually come fifth in the PTO US Open just a matter of days after becoming a father. Now we haven't actually, well, don't often see Sam compete in Europe, so we be interested to see how he copes with that travel, recently becoming a father. If he can cope with that well, then we definitely could see him contending for that podium. Yeah, another athlete who used to specialise over this distance and has kind of made quite a smooth transition to the longer distance is Ben Canute, who recently had that third place finish at Challenge Roth. However, quite early on in the season, he did say that Nice, the full distance world champs, don't work for him. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when he's putting all of his eggs back in this world championship basket. I mean, he's previously been on the podium in 2017 and in just last year in 2022 when he really gave Christian a run for his money. So I'm quite excited to see Ben perform. Yeah, next on the list is Jason West. Well, Jason has always been known for his run, but it feels like it's gone to a whole new level recently. We just watched him put almost five minutes into Jan Frodeno over 18K at the PTO US Open. Also had an impressive second place at Oceanside early this year. So it doesn't matter really where he is after the swim and the bike, he certainly can't be overlooked. Yeah, definitely can't. Now, another man who it's going to be interesting to see if he's still got what it takes to mix it at this level is Lionel Sanders. Now, we used to kind of think of him as a 70.3 specialist, but actually, until his very recent win at 70.3 Oregon, he hadn't had a win for over a year. But then that said, it was only last year, but the 2021 Ironman World Championships, where he was runner-up. So he could surprise us. That said, he's also become recently become a father, and he's traveling with his whole family, apparently, the first time all of them traveling from Arizona, where he's been based, over to Europe. So it'll be interesting to see how much of a toll that takes as yeah, well. Yeah, and also a technical course, which something the Americans yeah. aren't always as used to. Not saying Lionel is not used to a technical course, mm. but just all of the Americans. Yeah, um, another one um, that we possibly wouldn't necessarily think of normally is Pierre Lacour. Now, we could consider Pierre a bit of a wild card. I mean, he is better known for his short course accolades. In fact, he recently won WTCS Sunderland. And in fact, is towing the line like Christian 
at the Paris test event as we speak. So definitely that is where his strengths lie, but he did also win the World Triathlon World Long Distance Championships earlier this year. So it'll be interesting to see how he fends as well. Yeah, well, another one that we might not necessarily think of first straight away is Frederick Funk. He's a really aggressive racer, so he's certainly going to mix it up and not afraid to just leave it all out there. And I think quite a lot of people forget that he actually finished fifth last year. Yeah, definitely. Another one is Justus Nieschlag. He is world ranked 461. You could probably ignore that though because he's better known again for his short course racing. But this is the 70.3 World Championship, so can he turn it on for that too? Who knows? Well, the final one we're mentioning in this list is Thor Bendik Madsen, who is known for training with Magnus Ditlev and has similar power on the bike. So we know that he is certainly a weapon. He's only 23 years old. And again, one that was in the top 10 last year, finished eighth. So it'll be interesting to see if he can go a few places better this year. Well, we have thrown a lot of names into that list. Predicting how it might play out is going to be near impossible, but we're going to give it our best shot. Why not? Yeah. So the favourite on paper is without a doubt Christian Blumenfeld, but with his crazy race schedule, can he make it this time? I mean, at some point, surely we're going to see that he's human. We'd like to think so. We did see him have cramp recently. The yeah, that is true. Open, there's there's so some signs of weaknesses, funny. yeah. Well, um, let's take a look at how we think the race is sort of going to unfold. I mean, the swim is probably the clearer part and then it gets a little bit, lots of options. So um, one man we've not mentioned is Richard Varga. So he's probably going to lead out the swim. It just depends whether or who he takes with mm. him. We expect to see the likes of Ben Canute, maybe just as Nieschlag, maybe Pierre Lacour and some of the other sort of former ITU or World Triathlon athletes going with them. Yeah, we've got the likes of Frederick Funk Mickey Tugheart, they're all good swimmers, but are they good enough? And mm. they, it depends how hard the likes of Richard Varga are really pushing that swim, whether they can go with that and how much that deficit is coming out of the swim. But one athlete which you know could also, if they have a really good swim, because they're not that bad at swimming, is Jason West, whether he can stay in touch with them. There's going to be a lot of people looking over their shoulders for him, isn't there? Then I think we're going to you know, naturally see from that front pack, then there's going to be interesting to see where the sort of two more key pairs, I suppose, mm. the Norwegians, where Christian and Gustav are going to come out and then Lionel and, and Sam where they're going to be because obviously they, we, they're they known for having a, a weaker swim but the strong bike and the run and I think that front pack of the swim are going to be wanting to open up as big a gap from both of those groups or pairs. Yeah I do think with the amount of swimmers that could potentially hang on the feet of Richard or close to you I think that will benefit the likes of Christian hopefully Gustav as well and they're able to stay mm. there but if they can't yes they're going to be in a group behind that group that's off the front without the Norwegian in is obviously going to want to yeah. push super hard and work together to try and get an advantage knowing that these big names are chasing them behind. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of hard to see. I, I feel like Lionel and Sam are going to have a lot of work to do. I mean, if you look at the PTO rankings, in theory, they should be right up there you know, contending for that podium. But I'm I'm struggling to see with when we're actually looking at how many strong swimmers there are, like what that's going to do. Yeah, to well, they the are... They are fantastic runners so if they can come off the mm -hmm. bike there or thereabouts they certainly have got it in them to run themselves sure. onto the podium so certainly not writing them off but it just depends on that gap yeah. if there is one and I think all. I think one key player you mentioned is if Gustav could hang on to that group because I mm. think then we could see a very different result if he doesn't stay right. on that group. Predictions. Yeah, I mean, with what I feel like this is much more open. You can go women. first because I stole it last time. <laughs> oh, last time was so much easier. Oh my gosh. Um, I am going to go with Jason West for the win. Wow. Um, I mean, that just came. I, I, that wasn't like a thought out re um, result. So I love putting it's just, on the spot. Um, <laughs> let me think. And then Gustav for second, just because I really want him to be on the podium and um, have a great race. And gosh, third. I think it's going to be someone. Um, oh, I forgot Ben Canute. No. He's got to be higher up there. He yeah. was second last year. I feel like he's going to beat Christian this time. Can I just can I just go? Ben Canute, sorry, rearranging. Ben Canute, Jason West. No, Ben Canute, Gustav, Jason. Something like that. What's yours? Chaos. You put me on the. You shouldn't have put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go Gustav Eden first because I just really want him to. Yeah. And I do think he's got it. Uh, Christian Blumenfeld second, and then I think someone like Ben Canute's going to come in oh. in third. I realised I didn't actually say Christian in my in my top three. Sorry, Christian, but. <laughs> well, there we go. Let us know your predictions in the comments section down below. As we said at the start of this, you can watch this or tune in and track it at 7:30 local finish time on both. Saturday and Sunday, women's on Saturday, men's on Sunday. Cool, cannot wait. I mean, after this, I'm really excited to watch this unfold. Yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.